Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you a new generation tool I've made for Blender 2.8. This tool is specifically designed to help you generate mechs and bipedal robots from a list of parts contained within collections in the Outliner. There is a free and a paid version of the tool available for you to download from the links in the description, and as we progress through the video I'll explain the differences between the two versions in more detail. Just to briefly sum it up, the paid version of the tool includes a fully commented version of the generation script, an internal guide to get started, a text-based configuration system to customize the behavior of parts categories, and the full suite of artwork for the demonstration shown in the video. This will give you a nice amount of variety when using the generator. As well as this, the paid version will give you access to any future content updates for the package. In the free version of the tool, the code is not commented, there is no internal guide, there is also no text-based configuration system, and only enough artwork to generate one specific outcome. This means that you're getting one detailed mech model for free. But the procedure in both the free and the paid versions is the same, meaning that with a little bit of knowledge of how the system works, along with adding your own artwork to the collections, you'll be able to modify the system to build your own version of the generator. So feel free to download the free version below and see how everything works, and if you feel like you want the extra functionality and artwork, then consider picking up a copy of the paid version. For the rest of this video, I'll show you how everything works, so you can get up and running and start building your own versions of the generator. When you open the blend file, the first thing you want to do is find the script in the text editor window, then click text and choose run script. This will register the classes with Blender and allow them to be called from the search window or the Python console. To run the operation from the search window, press F3 and then search for start generation procedure. The result of the generation procedure will appear in the scene contained inside of the generation result collection. If there were any pre-existing objects inside of this collection, then they would have been deleted at the beginning of the procedure. If you generate a result that you like, you should remove it from the collection to prevent it from being accidentally deleted the next time you call the script. Just like the random weapon system in the previous video, the parts of the mech know where they need to be placed thanks to position reference objects. For example, if I isolate one of the torso pieces and make the child position reference objects visible, then we can see how they tell the system where the following parts should be placed. In this version of the generator, the arms are asymmetrical, whereas the legs and feet are symmetrical, so we treat the arms as separate objects to each require their own position references whereas the legs will only require one reference as we will mirror their result afterwards, as indicated within the config system which we will look at shortly. The reference objects need to follow a naming convention, because the name will tell the script which objects to associate with this position. For example, if we take a look at the name pos underscore parts underscore upper leg, the pos section of the name will let the script know that this is a position reference, and whatever follows the first underscore will define which part should be placed at this location. This name needs to be identical to one of the collections used in the generation procedure, in this case, we can see that it's going to place an object from the parts underscore upper leg collection at the location of this reference. What this reference system allows you to do is customize the starting point of branching objects depending on the shape of a parent. What I mean by branching objects are objects that have a series of nested children. A leg or an arm would be a suitable example of this because they are comprised of an upper, lower and end section. So if you have many different torso objects, each with variable height and width, with the use of position references you can tell it where to guide the generation of new branches. But this doesn't just apply to the torso. The upper arms could also have different lengths, and each of them will also contain a position reference that says where the following lower arm piece should be placed. This means that throughout multiple layers, the position and rotation of the newly selected object is completely unknown until the script has randomly selected the parents. The script I've written will take this into account and compensate for the change in position and rotation of the previous objects in a branch to make sure that everything is placed correctly. Now we'll take a look at the config system. In the paid version of the tool, you will have access to this. It's a simple text file that follows a JSON format, letting you specify override parameters for each of the collections in the generator. At the moment, there are only a few overrides you can specify, relating to rotation and mirroring. These values must be placed within the internal config.gen text file and formatted perfectly, otherwise the script will fail to run. Using the allow underscore rotation value will tell the script whether to apply the Euler rotation of a position reference to the generated object. Using the mirror underscore x, y, and z value will tell the script whether to create a mirror modifier on the generated parts and activate the mirroring across the specified axis. As I create more complex versions of generators, I will add functionality for more overrides and specialized behaviors. When it comes to adding your own parts, you need to pay close attention to the origins of the objects. When a part is selected from a collection, the script will move the object by its origin to the position reference. To demonstrate this, I will quickly modify the script to show the reference objects alongside the result. As you can see, the black arrows indicate where each of the position references have been placed. If we click on each individual object, you can see that the origins of the pieces are placed at the exact locations of the references. Strictly speaking, if the mesh content of this weapon had stayed where it was, but we moved the origin off to the side, then the script would have tried to move the object back this way and we would see the mesh content floating off in space. Origins can be a strange thing to explain to people who are brand new to modeling, but they are very important to understand if you want to make pieces for this generator. 
If you're not sure where the origin should be placed on your object, then just take a look at the template pieces I have packaged in the resources and try to copy them. If you don't know how to move the origin of an object, just right click it with it selected and go to Set Origin. You will see that you have a few options including moving it to Geometry, which will essentially place it at the center point of the mesh, but the one that's most useful for us is moving the origin to the 3D cursor. Just as an example, I can select our object and go into Edit Mode, then select a face, press Shift S and choose Cursor to Selection. Then I'll go back into Object Mode, right click, go to Set Origin and choose Origin to 3D Cursor. That is how you move the origin of an object to another location in space, and it will now be used as the pivot point for any movement or rotation. Ok, I think that will cover it for the technical explanation of how it works. I must apologize if any of that was off-putting, especially for newer users of Blender, but building a system like this does require using Blender in a slightly unconventional way. As for future plans for this and other generators, I don't have a timeline at the moment, but current plans for updates include automatic parent-child rigging to make the results easier to animate, as well as new collections of parts to add variety to the paid generator. Depending on the response to this generator, I may go back and make a more advanced version of the weapon generator, and even start working on more complex generators for starships, space stations, buildings and so on. There are lots of cool things I want to make, but of course I'm only one person, so I need to do it one step at a time, and I appreciate all the support that you continue to provide. But putting that aside, that's where we're going to leave it for this video. Don't forget to pick up a copy of the tool if you're interested in playing around with it. I'm really interested to see what kinds of cool and funky generators you can come up with. You can also follow me on the social media channels to stay up to date, or join our Discord server to get sneak previews and upcoming content. So thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.